Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm your host, Jim Goddard. John, CanStar Resource has published results for its Kenora Gold Project in Western Ontario. It appears the market did not like them. Did the old-timers manage to leave not even a scrap of gold behind for a junior to discover? Jim, as you recall, CanStar Resources uh, has the Kenora Project in Western Ontario, where at the turn of the century, there was a big gold mining uh, flurry in that area where prospectors found high-grade gold outcropping, and they dug little holes on top of it. It only went down about 70, 100 meters, and then the quartz veins petered out, and uh, and it was forgotten, and other areas such as Red Lake uh, were discovered in the in the 30s, and they became the new focus in western Ontario. Canstar went into this area and assembled all these claims just to the east of the town of Kenora, uh, near, quite near the airport, on the theory that modern exploration has never done this area justice. And they did an eight-hole program earlier this year, which uh, finished in February. They did not have results ready for uh, 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 for PDAC, which uh, I guess was a bit of a warning, since if anybody got anything good in the core, they would have rushed assay to be able to put it out at PDAC. But they just put out results this week that are pretty disappointing, uh, sort of one-meter intervals of less than a half gram per ton gold. But there was one interesting uh, interval of 22 meters of a uh, half gram per gold, which suggests, well, here, here's a bunch of smoke. The question is, uh, did the old timers really mine out all the little fires that were in this area? And uh, the disappointing thing about this program is that with the drill rig they used, they were not able to get in position to drill underneath where the one area, the ace showing, where they have high grade at surface. So they have not been able to test what's down plunge from this showing. So they plan to go back in there in about four to eight weeks with a smaller rig and drill in that area to really find out what's going on and see if there is a fire somewhere related to this smoke. So disappointing results, but it's not over yet. The company has a million dollars in the treasury. It's not going to cost too much to go back in there and finish the job. So they'll either pound a stake in the heart of this uh, Kenora story, or they'll maybe get the kind of intersection needed to turn the market into a believer. Tri Origin Explorations completed a drill program last fall on its South Abitibi project funded by Sumitomo, but it never reported any drill results. Is South Abitibi a bust? Well, it certainly looked that way. Uh, the, the South Abitibi area uh, is uh, to, to the west of uh, the Cobalt Tomogamy area where, where there's uh, younger uh, uh, Proterozoic sedimentary rocks that cover the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. Uh, some places it's deep, others it's only 100, 100 meters depth. Uh, not much exploration has gone on in this area because uh, there's very little at surface that anybody can sort of hammer away at with a with with a with a hammer. And uh, the theory that Bob Valiant came up with and convinced Sumitomo to participate in is that if we apply contemporary geophysical surveys to this eerie area, we will be able to see through the barren cover rocks and possibly see uh, geophysical anomalies representing either VMS deposits, massive sulfide of the, that would contain base metals of the sort that Sumitomo should be interested in, but also possible sulfide systems that hold, host gold, which for some reason Sumitomo is also interested in. So several years ago, they flew a big airborne survey over this this area. Uh, there's about four target areas as they break it down. Uh, last year, they did ground geophysics in the target area one in an area where they had some interesting anomalies. They drilled, and they did not get any reportable drill intersections of, of gold or anything. They got sniffs of gold, and the good news was that, uh, yes, the Abitibi greenstone, archean rocks underneath the cover rocks are fertile for gold, but clearly the uh, the IP anomalies that are supposed to represent sulfide systems were not enriched with gold. So that area, you know, requires farther w- more work down the road. But Sumitomo decided, well, okay, that's enough for this area. We've got three other areas. The next area is, is um, 
north of the uh, Northland VMS deposit. It's in an area where another junior in, in, in the past decade or so uh, explored a uh, high-grade gold occurrences in the uh, cover rocks that never really amounted to anything. Bob Valiant thinks that this is um, leakage from underlying uh, Archean rock-hosted deposits. So Sumitomo has approved a budget for $424,000 for what they call pre-drilling work, which basically means doing ground geophysics uh, in the vicinity of the um, sort of MAG-EM conductors that the Airborne Survey showed up. And the target here is primarily uh, uh, pyrite-hosted disseminated gold deposits, and we don't know if they'll get any of these targets to justify a farther a, a, a follow-up drill program in the fall. However, we do know there are EM conductors in this area which are unlikely to be the um, you know a host representing uh, gold systems, but they could be VMS deposits. So very likely we will see uh, uh, at least some targets generated for follow-up drilling. Uh, in, in the fall. So the South Abitibi project is still alive and well, and Sumitomo is knocking off these four areas one by one. This is the year that target area um, two gets uh, hit. Uh, the stock is about as cheap as it has ever been. Uh, I am a shareholder of it. Uh, the company has improved its balance sheet considerably since last year. There is a $300,000 promissory note owed to Bob Valiant, which comes due on June 30th. I think the market is waiting to see if the CEO is going to increase his skin in the game and convert that $300,000 loan into shares at $0.05, cents, uh, give them an extra $6 million shares, make the balance sheet look a lot better, which with a government uh, refund that they're supposed to get would give them about $600,000 working capital which would be enough to uh, start work on some of the other projects that they have generated in Ontario. Discovery Watch with John Kaiser will be right back after the break. I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent-pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest-cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com, or phone us at 604-924-5504. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc., listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. John, has the financing frenzy of the past couple of months touched any more of our Discovery Watch juniors? Well, the uh, series of bot deals and that that we saw in, in February has, has subsided uh, somewhat. But one of them, one of our Discovery Watch juniors that managed to snag a $5.1 million bot deal is Monarch Gold, which has been working on its Quanar project in Quebec, east of Val d'Or. Uh, they had completed a pre-feasibility study for a fairly small-scale 425-ton-per-day uh, 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 mining oper- underground mining operation where they were going to truck or rail the, uh, the, the deposit to one of the uh, mills that would toll mill it for them. That PFS did not look very interesting at $1,200 gold, but since then they've raised considerable money. They've done considerable silt drilling in the... Uh, Quarnar and in the gold bug area of that project. And more importantly, last year they bought their own mill, the Beacon Mill, for about three and a half million dollars. It's 60 kilometers from the, from the project, uh, so they would have to truck it. They're now also looking at possibly railing the ore. And uh, the pre-feasibility study will incorporate the ownership of that mill and whatever its metallurgical, uh, requirements uh, will be. And they've also started a 3,000 meter drill program on the Simcar project, which is about three kilometers to the west of Quarnar, as part of their strategy of assembling uh, various mines in the area that uh, can be 
mined and have the ore shipped to a mill that they now control. So $5.1 million, uh, uh, part of it at $0.45, cents and the flow-through part at $0.66. Cents. So this company is cashed up to uh, continue its uh, exploration of uh, its uh, Quebec projects. Discovery Watch will continue right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage, HowStreet.com. Welcome back to Discovery Watch. John, did your PDAC visit last week to Toronto generate any new Discovery Watch ideas? One company that really stood out is the Miner- is Mineral Mountain Resources, uh, which is headed by Nelson Baker, who discovered the Rainy River deposit, which was has been bought out and being put into production by New New Gold. Um, they have assembled a package of claims in the Homestake Trend. This is a 70-kilometer belt in South Dakota, uh, at the northern end of which is the Homestake Mine, found in the late 1800s and which operated until 2001 by Homestake, produced 40 million ounces of main, uh, from underground uh, resources uh, uh, of you know, 8, 8 to 12 gram per ton gold. It was absolutely fabulous mine. Um, Nelson Baker uh, steered Mineral Mountain into this region into 2012, and they first targeted the Holy Terror Project, which is at the southern end of this uh, trend. They had an expensive uh, option agreement. Uh, they ended up spending about four million dollars uh, uh, testing targets uh, in, on the on the Holy Terror ground, and another 2.9 million in option payments um, through shares and cash. But they ended up losing the deal because of the bad market last year. However, at the same time, Nelson Baker had been assembling claims a bit farther north in the Rockford area. And they have put together the largest single land position in the history of this belt, which has a horrible history of fragmented ownership and is, in fact, a reason that the homestake, uh, while it still existed uh, before Barrick took it over, was never really ever in a ever in a position to do modern systematic exploration to see if there are more of these iron formation hosted uh, homestake style deposits. Now, just to put into context of what is going on here, uh, this region uh, at one point was a basin about 1.7 billion years ago, uh, underwater um, developed uh, these iron formation deposits, which are basically a chemical precipitation phenomenon. Then it underwent a north-south compression, which created these, this what they call the F1 folds. And then it underwent an east-west compression, which created uh, uh, the, the so-called F2 folds. And what this did was uh, it uh, forced the uh, iron formation to form these cigar-shaped uh, thickened zones. And it also created the type of environment that developed the uh, uh, shears and, and, and cracks and so on that coincided with a fluid flow uh, that harvested the gold from somewhere along the way, maybe even from some of the iron formation uh, in, in that area. And in these thickened structures, the gold ended up enriched because it was the right type of host for dropping the gold out of solution. Uh, it's, it's similar to the orogenic uh, deposits in, in Ontario, and it produced these fabulous cigar tape shaped uh, deposits, uh, uh, which which they call ledges in, in this particular area. And uh, what the Mineral Mountain has done is, in the Rockford area, they've identified five of these so-called trends of inferred thickening of the iron formation two of which have mines at the surface, the Cochrane and the standby mines, former mines, small mines. 
never anything really big done. Homestake, uh, before it shut down work, uh, uh, did some drilling in these areas and uh, did not quite do enough drilling to vector in on on, on the resources because management said, you know, go back north to the North Home Stake and just do some brownfields exploration. And so what Mineral Mountain has now done is assembled a district scale land package. They have not done any drilling themselves on this area, but uh, it's become kind of a refugee camp for uh, former Home Stake employees or people who worked in that area. And the driving force at the moment is... Um, is, is Bob Brozdowski, who used to work for uh, Homestake and Western Mining, who had stuff and projects in this area. And they have now done a 3D compilation of all this historical data, $20 million worth of historical data, and are setting up to do a $5 million drill program to test the, uh, the down plunge projections of both the Cochrane and the standby. Uh, 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 zones to see if there are similar multi-million ounce, 8 to 12 gram per ton deposits in this area. And, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty exciting play as far as I'm concerned because thanks to the fragmented ownership, nobody has ever been able to really look at the project from a systematic perspective. Uh, the company a number of years ago while it was working on the Holy Terror spent $600,000 flying this whole belt uh, from the sort of north of Rockford all the way down to uh, to the Holy Terror area. And while this, un unlike, say, what the, is happening with Tri-Origin in, in the South Abitibi, in this case, the geophysical data does not identify specific drill targets for which you can set up a, a kill shot. Instead, what it is is a mapping tool to show help you identify where are the folds in this system, uh, where where does the iron formation begin and end, and just set up the geological context for drill programs, which are going to require multiple drill holes to vector in on the target. So this $5 million that they want to spend is designed not necessarily to deliver the discovery hole that says they got another you know, 10 million ounce plus uh, home stake deposit on the hands, but basically to home in on it and set the stage for coming up with that uh, big discovery hole uh, uh, sometime later this year or early next year. The company so far has only raised a million dollars. Where will it get the money needed to complete a $5 million program? Well, this is a question that I have asked them. And the, the, the million dollars that they just raised at 27 and a half cents uh, comes from a variety of investors. And they don't really at this point have backing from, from say, the Bay Street crowd because the Bay Street crowd is uh, interested in mineralized systems where there is already uh, a deposit present, such, such as uh, Monarch Gold's uh, Cornar system where you're, you're drilling to find more of it. Uh, in this case, this is sort of earlier stage conceptual. Yes, there are some existing resources on, on adjoining ground that by themselves do not uh, amount to a lot. But the appeal of this project will likely be one of the producers who have been doing deals with the juniors, not farming deals because the juniors do not want to give up the 100% control of the project. But one of these deals where, say, you get a financing done at a premium to market, in this case, uh, with the stock sort of in the 25 to 30 cent range, what if one of these um, gold producers did a uh, $5 million deal at 50 cents uh, at a premium to market, say, no warrants attached, uh, uh, and give them a foothold in the company with maybe rights to continue, maintain that position by participating in any future financing? This is the sort of district-scale project that is of interest um, to these uh, mid-tier to uh, major producers. Last week, we talked about uh, Newmont doing a deal with uh, Gold Strike Resources. That was actually a farming deal. This will be more a deal along the lines of what, say, um, uh, Agnico Eagle did uh, last week with uh, Gold Quest and its uh, uh, Romeo project in the Dominican Republic, where they put $22 million into the company so that it could see if there were many more Romero deposits within that trend. So I would expect a producer-style financing at a premium to market to bring in the rest of the money uh, for this project. 
John, what's happened with the Homestake mine since 2001? Well, all depleted mines usually get flooded and sealed off, but in this case, the Homestake mine, because it is so deep, 2,000 meters deep, has been turned into a particle physics research center. In fact, one of my squash partners regularly heads off to South Dakota and sits there and monitors the little flashes of light on their screens. Because it's so deep, there's no interference from uh, 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 radiation from the sun or anything like that. And so they're looking for things like the Higgs boson and other obscure particles that help them try and understand the the, the earliest uh, stages of the universe and other weird stuff related to super th- string theory and so on. So it is a research center and still serving us well. John, thank you very much for the update. You're welcome, Jim. We've been talking with John Kaiser, his website, kaiserresearch.com. Discovery Watch will be back next week. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.